Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank members for the support, Mr. Speaker. Just want to mention just a few things, Mr. Speaker. The member for Shuzel, Mr. Speaker, he had the old refrain of the government spending a million dollars in schools, Mr. Speaker. It's a pity that the member of Shuzel and his party, when they cling on to something that's not true, they believe that they can say it all the time, repeat, and people believe it, Mr. Speaker. We have, on countless occasions, explained, both in government and out of government, that during our term in office, school repairs would, were housed in the Ministry of Infrastructure because we thought it better where, the, in, where all the expertise, the engineers, the building technicians, the quality surveyors, all of them are housed in the Ministry of Infrastructure. So it made more sense if all repairs, all building, all buildings, all repairs to public buildings were housed in the Ministry of, Ministry of Infrastructure. Because all the experts are there, Mr. Speaker. But you know, the, minister, the member for shows he knows very well why construction was taken away from the Ministry of Infrastructure and sent to other ministries, including education and economic development. He knows very well, Mr. Speaker. He knows very well. And he doesn't want me to go down, down, that, down, that, down that, that path. Because he knows very well why the, why the Ministry of Infrastructure was systematically disenfranchised, systematically disenfranchised, and construction went to the Ministry of Economic Development. He knows very well why it happened. He knows it's because contractors and consultants could be chosen by direct award in the Ministry of Economic Development. And he knows very well who the contractors were chosen, what contractor was chosen. And he knows very well about the $70 million worth of direct awards. And he knows very well about a contractor who right now, as you speak, has over $100 million worth of direct awards from the Ministry of Economic Development. He knows very well. I don't know why he's going down that, that, that path. I don't know why he's doing that, Mr. Speaker. Why is he doing that? He knows very well that the Ministry of Education, $10 million was given for school repairs in his time. He knows. And I asked him to outline to me the schools that were repaired for $10 million. Just give us a listing. And what is the cost of each of the schools? I, mean, so I, um, I wish that he would not send me down, down, down that track. Because I've listened to all the propaganda, all the lies, all the postings, and I've not responded. But he's telling me down the track, Mr. Speaker. Because at some point, the truth, you know, I don't know, I don't understand, Mr. Speaker, how the opposition lost an election and they still continue to do the same things that caused them to lose. They persist in doing the same things that caused them to lose. Lies, lies, misinformation, planting for fake news. These days they have some foreign fellow giving news about St. Lucia. Nobody knows where he come from, but everywhere giving news about St. Lucia. All kinds of that's, that, that has no traction, Mr. Speaker. So that the, it was never, the million dollars, Mr. Speaker, the, the member of social knows, was $10,000 given to the principals of schools for petty cash so they can do little repairs to their schools. That was what $1 million is for. Not for the total repair of schools. The repairs for schools were in the Ministry of Infrastructure's budget because the Ministry of Infrastructure handled repairs for schools. And the Minister of Finance is there. He, he can verify what I'm saying, Mr. Speaker. That's what happened. And he knows very well that the, not the money that was spent for schools, the repainting of schools, the work that was done in schools, Mr. Speaker, was done for the Ministry of Infrastructure. And we never had $10 million to spend, but the output was a lot more. So I want to say one thing, maybe he may not have known, but I want to, to tell him, Mr. Speaker, be careful when he's going down that, that, that path, Mr. Speaker, of repeating these lies, repeating these lies, constantly repeating these lies. Mr. Speaker, the member for, for Viewfort South, and I agree with him on the airport. 
and we're going to have a debate about the airport also. Because an airport that's, that was supposed to have the original drawings for the airport was for 600, I think, 600 tiles, piles, piles, 600 piles in one location. No one can tell me the reason why the location was changed from the original location to a new location. We brought in a consultant, and the consultant said that the person who made that decision needs to have his head re-examined. And you know, and just by the word of one man, one man, the, the terminal building was removed from that location and put in that location, and it necessitated 3,000 tiles. 3,000 tiles, 3,000, and a cost overrun of over $46 million, just in the foundation of the airport, Mr. Speaker. $46 million cost of a run for the foundation alone. Jesus. Mr. Speaker, and they talk, and they, and they, and they, and they give this self-righteous, that self-righteous posturings, self-righteous posturings. We are good. We did so much, so many good things. Mr. Speaker, just like St. Jude, we come in this, we're going to come there. Just like St. Jude, Mr. Speaker, anything that will benefit the people of this country, the opposition is against because they're not in government. Anything. So you talk about airports and, and, and piles. Mr. Speaker, that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want, to, I want to assure the member for Viewfort South that his the Philip Master grounds are going to be repaired. What we are waiting for is for the appropriate contractor to, to effect the work, Mr. Speaker. So as soon as the contractor is chosen, the works on the um, Philip Master grounds are going to be affected, Mr. Speaker. And on, on his preschool, Mr. Speaker, we are working on that. We, he will hear from me very soon about the preschool, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm glad the member for Shoezel knows that we are doing work on the schools in Shoezel. We are doing work in Shoezel, a lot of work. Shoezel has more community centers per area than any other place in, in, in St. Lucia. There are more community centers in Chozel per square foot than anywhere else in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. But when, when we came into government, we didn't stop it. We didn't stop it. We continued. And I'm going to come to Chozel to open two or, three, two or three of them with him, if he invites me, Mr. Speaker. But let me, but let me tell you what his government did. You know, remind what his government, let me remind you, Mr. Speaker. And you know, Mr. Speaker, it fascinates me the self-righteousness of the United Workers Party and the surrogates. It fascinates me. They pretend as if they were never in government. That St. Lucia began on the 26th of July, 2021. That's when St. Lucia began. So, Badale, customs, 26th of July. All before that, the police, 26th of July. All before that, St. Lucia did not exist. Or things were perfect in St. Lucia before the 26th of July, Mr. Speaker. That's how they pretend. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you something about the Shoezell schools and why we continue to do work in Shoezell, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, won't, I don't want to speak about my constituency. The Minister of Education, I have spoken about what they've done, how they allowed the entry school to come to a complete state of disrepair, complete in the Anjibo school, because it's located in my constituency. But what you don't understand is that the children who go to Anjibo are not all from my constituency. You know, in their short-sightedness, they don't, they don't realize that they're causing people in other parts of the country to suffer. Anjibo, they allow, they allow a complete block to deteriorate. They refuse. It was the Anjibo school was in a list of schools to be repaired. They took it out. And I'll tell you what they did again. The Enchipo wall, the, the Marsha wall, Mr. Speaker, starting from Castries going up to Enchipo, Mr. Speaker. When we were in government, the World Bank continued construction 
of began construction that wall because anytime rain fell, the Georgia's Boulevard, that area, the place they call them places. That's how they refer to it, them places. As if people don't live there, them places. But these are my people. They, these walls, were not, for when rain fell, flooding. We started construction of these walls. The World Bank started construction of these walls, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know when the United States Party got into government, they found the construction of these walls going. You know the guys wrote the funding agency and told them stop the construction of these walls and build the walls in surface countries. And I invite you, Mr. Speaker, I invite you. Let's go see it. Yes, it's coming. So many things come into Parliament, you'll be surprised. You see, you all been just do this, do that, talk this. I hope, I hope you all begin to shout victimization. I hope you don't do it, you know. I hope. Because you all have been pushing, do this, do that. You know? They wrote a letter asking, and you know, they have the bravado, Mr. Speaker, to you know, this bad journalist, you do what you want, do what you want, Mr. Speaker. The people have done what they want already. The people have done it already. We leave you in the hands of the people. They are the ones who judge. So, Mr. Speaker, the, the guys wrote a letter saying, stop the walls in Cassius East, in the Marchand area. Stop it and bring it to surface Cassius. And up to this day, up to this day, these walls have not been completed. We just try to do it now, Mr. Speaker. And if you go by the car park, or by the park, car park on the Marshall Road, you'll see the, 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 the river bank is right on the verge of the water course, Mr. Speaker, because of the victimization of the United Workers Party refusing to do work in Cassius because I was a parliamentary rep, Mr. Speaker. So when he speaks about this, he must be careful, Mr. Speaker, about continuity. He must be very careful in about continuity. Very careful. You may not be involved because probably you were not in the in the sanction. Probably outside. You may not have been there. You may, you may, you may have been on the margins because basically you're a good guy. But the company that that, that you keep that's bad. <laughs> and I've warned you to join that new day. Join the new day. The new day just take one step on the other side. That's where the new day is. I've told you so already. Where you are not good for you. I've warned you. <clears throat> anyway, Mr. Speaker, so we continued, we continue, Mr. Speaker, in the progress as far as education is concerned, Mr. Speaker. So this continuity, this continuity that he's talking about, he must be careful because everything that we try to do, Mr. Speaker, we get opposition, albeit by word of mouth, Mr. Speaker. And I've warned public servants, I've said to them, Work with the policy of the government. Do not, and there is a trend of attacking public servants. They attack the chief of police, the, commission, the acting commissioner of police. There is an attack. There is a personal attack that is run on public servants to cause them not to do their job. The last attack was on the control of customs. Mr. Speaker, do you know? Before the control of customs was appointed by the Permanent Service Commission, before I became minister, I didn't know him. I did not know the control of customs, man to man, I didn't know him. When I became minister of finance, the cabinet secretary informed me of who the control of customs was. And we had a discussion. And the cabinet secretary said that he was a control of customs. I do not even know the gentleman face to face. I didn't know him, Mr. Speaker. But I, I hear a long story about control of customs. Eh? And yeah, I'm, I'm his godfather too. You understand? A long story, just like they say I'm his godfather. <coughs> a long story, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, we, that's not how we, we operate. That's not how we operate. So, the control, so now, the story now is on the control of customs. That's the story, Mr. Speaker. A gentleman who is one, Mr. Speaker, you know, anyhow. But what keeps me going, Mr. Speaker, is the support of the people of St. Lucia. That's what keeps me going. How the people of St. Lucia appreciate what the government is doing. And you see it 
In all the celebrations, you see the emancipa emancipation, they made a big political hula boo with Carnival in Soufre. A whole story. Carnival in Soufre. Look, look, look what happened in Soufre Sunday for Carnival Music Week. Not one incident. Not one incident. And they were praying a hundred murders. Tell them we shall have a hundred murders before the year is over. Tell them we shall have, that's what you mean to me, an opposition party can pray that the country has a hundred murders before the year is over? An opposition party, you want to get in the government? You mean to me an opposition party can consistently, persistently support a gentleman who encourages young people to use ammunition? You support that, Mr. Speaker? Because you want to get into government? And your sorrow gets a lot of people will say whatever they want. I was in Viewfort. I was in Viewfort on Sunday, Mr. Speaker. My roots are in Viewfort North. I was in Viewfort on Sunday. I always go to Viewfort. I have business. I had business in Viewfort. I have interest in Viewfort. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker. So, when they, when I know, I know when I heard, Mr. Speaker. When I heard this thing about, when I heard that thing about, tell politicians not to go to Viewfort. I mean, Mr. Speaker, but you know, I know why. Because you know, this man lost his deposit in Viewfort. So when you lose your deposit in Viewfort, I mean, you must tell people that you lose your deposit. This was forget. You know, they forget. They forget. After we took his deposit in Cassius East, you know, we took it there too. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's political history is having lost two deposits. He has a record of having lost the most deposits in Saint Lucia's political history. That's his record. The member, yes, he he got the personal run for Chris Owen party. Got more votes than him. You don't believe that? And now you talking about the place? Eh? The member for Viva South took one deposit. I took another. Two deposits. In your political history, are you talking? Are you talking? So, Mr. Speaker, but they encourage that because you know they are clutching at straws. They're clutching at straws, and all how they try to spread this unity among the men, women, and this party, Mr. Speaker. That will not work. We come from strength to strength, Mr. Speaker, and the challenges the next election because the next election, I've said to them, I may have to choose a leader of the opposition for my party. I may have to ask one of these gentlemen to be or ladies be in the opposition. <laughs> I may have to choose it because, so it's because I want to thank the minister, the member for his for his contribution, and, and again invite him to do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.